Hey guys, Ben with Ben's Viewfinder here, and we are here today to do a editing tutorial. I am sorry that the audio sounds kind of peaky. I am using a different microphone today due to my other one not being available. So uh, today we're going to talk about extending backgrounds and clone stamping a little bit because I had someone in a photography group ask about how to extend their background, and so I thought I would do a short video on it. Now, this is an image I'm not really planning on using. I didn't really like how it came out, but it was a good way to give you an example of what I'm talking about here. So let's, uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of things on how to clone stamp, how to kind of fix a couple of things, and uh, then we'll extend the background. So let's say that you have something in an image kind of like this that you want to get rid of, or in a minute here I'll show you how to extend a background, but you don't exactly know how to do that. Well, there's a couple of ways to do this. The first thing I'm going to do, let me drag this over so you can see. Uh, I'm going to always duplicate my layer because I always want to be able to have the original to go back to just in case uh, my editing doesn't work out. So we'll right click on this and we'll hit duplicate layer and we'll work on our copy layer here. And now there's a couple of different options. One is that sometimes if it's very simple stuff and it's not elaborate and you don't need fancy things, you can use this thing called the spot healing brush tool. And you can click on this and then you can make your brush a little bit bigger. And you can sometimes just literally brush over it and it'll try to fill it in with whatever it thinks that you're trying to basically put in there. And you can see it actually put in bricks, but it didn't exactly do a very good job. They look all crazy and willy wonka So I'm gonna hit Control-Z to undo that. And I'm gonna show you, you can also do, if you hold this down to a regular healing brush tool, and you can select the area that you wanna pull from so I just clicked on these bricks here. I, I hit Alt, I held down Alt, and I clicked. And then now I can line these bricks up however I like. And then in this case, I don't think they're going to line up very perfectly and go over it like that and create or copy like that. So it looks better than the last one, but you can still tell that it's trying to fill in because then after you do it, it's going to try to fill in the little blanks for you. And so it still doesn't look quite right. So, but those are a couple options sometimes in certain situations, those will work pretty well. And so what we're going to do now instead is just clone stamp. And now when you're clone stamping, this is going to, as you can hover over, you can see it's showing you different things. You want to select the area that is kind of near and kind of similar to what you're trying to copy. So in this case, I'm going to use the bricks Let's go up a little bit further. We'll use these bricks here because they don't have this little shortened pattern that these bricks have. And now we're going to line this up. And now this isn't going to try to do any fancy filler options. This is only going to do what I basically tell it to do. And now you'll notice that as I move this around, what I'm trying to do is size my bricks properly so that it looks like they're supposed to fit. Because if I go like this, if you can see, now some of my bricks, especially on the left-hand side of the circle, look really squashed. So the idea is to make this look like you didn't do it, to make it look realistic. So we'll go kind of over here somewhere where it's going to look more like the bricks are the proper sizes. And we're going to try to line this up really well. And then I'm going to click and hold and start dragging, and it's going to start filling in. And if you look up above me, you can actually see a little um, crosshair just to, to the upper right-hand side of his guitar there. And that is where it is currently pulling from. And as I brush back and forth, that little crosshair moves and pulls information from what I'm doing. And as you can see, that looks a lot better. That looks a little bit more natural. Now, I still have some other problems here, like this part of the guitar is starting to show through here and stuff like that. And so we can go through and we can pull again. We can go from a smaller area. We can go here and line this up with the lines of the bricks here and fill some of that in. And we can find a corner. We can use the same corner if we want to here. And you can do this as much as you want the idea with it, obviously, being that we want everything to look a little bit more natural now. And so you can go through here and you can literally just do this over and over and over again and create until you have a brick wall that looks like you want it to look. Now I'm going to just take this little part here. And so now you can see, and this isn't perfect, I'm not going to do all the cleanup work because I don't want you to worry about it too much, but in comparison to what we started with, 
And if nobody ever saw that thing, you wouldn't know that there was ever anything there, really. And it's a good idea to, like I said, always do cleanup work, always go through and really make it look really good. But so let's say in this case, now, like I said, I'm not going to use this picture, but obviously because it's badly composed because he's right in the middle of it. So but let's say I wanted to off center him. Let's say I wanted to move him to the right and I want it to be to follow the rule of thirds. And so I want to do that. OK. But now I need to fill in all that space, right? Well, you do basically the exact same thing, only it's going to take a lot of time to do it. And you can make this easier or harder on yourself. And again, you always want to line everything up. Now, in this case, due to the fact that my background differs from these darker bricks to lighter bricks, that's going to make this one a little bit harder. But if you're using just a regular solid background, it won't be as bad. All right. Well, I, with these smaller bricks, we're going to want to line this up down here, aren't we? You have to excuse me. I didn't exactly practice for this. This was something that somebody on a photography group asked about. So I am trying to help out. As you can see, I'm starting to bring through a little bit of his elbow there, so we don't want to do that. And then again, we can just do this again. Alt-click again to select my area. Again, you want to start somewhere where you're... And I know I'm doing a very sloppy job of this. But the goal is to get you started and then have you go from there. And so as you can see, we're filling in. We're starting to get somewhere. And so this wall is now being extended over. And again, this line here needs to be cleaned up. This line here needs to be cleaned up. I would align these bricks a little bit better. But you can do the same thing down here with this pavement. Or even better yet, take your line. Now the problem with the lines is that it's not going to look very perspectively correct. And so that you might need to do a little bit of specialty work with. And you want to try to make it the same distance, obviously, apart. But you can sit here and you can pull different information from different spaces to put your image together. And now I'm just starting to pull stuff from random areas so that I can just kind of fill this in for you. I don't really like the way that looks, though. Uh, and so you literally just go through keep filling in and the part of the trick is that sometimes if you're doing this with more elaborate things and you really want it to look clean you want to pull in this case it's a pattern so you want to keep all your geometric shapes the same but you can also pull from different locations to try to make it look more natural because obviously if you look here and you look here it looks almost exactly the same because I've duplicated it multiple times over going across. So sometimes it would be good as you're coming across to maybe use some of this and maybe use some of the ones over here and use some of the ones down here and try to mix them in so it doesn't look like an exact repeating pattern all the way across. Uh, and then again, go through and clean this stuff up. Don't leave this like this. Go through and clean these lines up. Make your bricks straight. Make sure they line up. Make sure they run in a straight line. But comparative to what we were just working with, We've now gotten rid of this huge grate here, and we've extended ourselves to kind of recrop him into the picture. And again, I would straight, I would make this line look more perspectively correct. I would make these lines look cleaner. But this gives you an idea on how to get started, and it's really just kind of a practice and thing. Uh, you know, uh, a do it and practice and kind of learn where to pull different things from and how to clean up lines. Use multiple layers if you kind of get to a place where you feel kind of happy. Let's say you got to here and you want to do some more work, but you didn't want to worry about destroying it. Create another duplicate layer. Go ahead and keep working. Uh, that way you always have ways, um, steps you can go back to or places you can go to pull information from. So let's say like in the end I decided I wanted this great back I would be able to just mask that in now and have it back uh, with this background or whatever so I hope that at least gets you guys started um, it was more of a quick tip uh, if you need some more advanced help if you if you have some more questions and you want me to kind of go into some more detail 
just leave a comment or uh, shoot me a message and I'll see what I can do about getting you the rest of the way there. I hope this helped, guys, and I hope it got you started. Check out the blog at uh, on Facebook for Ben's Viewfinder or check out bensviewfinder.com for all my work. Thanks for checking in, guys.